What up everybody, Zach the Tax Fat here, and today we are attacking how to meal prep for weight loss. Now I say for weight loss specifically because I feel like a lot of people are intimidated with how to meal prep when it comes to weight loss and normally it's something that I think is very valuable to do if you are trying to lose weight. Now this is more of a beginner's guide and kind of just tips and tricks because I know it can be very daunting when it comes to just trying to figure out where to start or how to meal prep or what you need in order to start meal prep. So that's where we're going to start today. I'm going to start off by showing you my meal prep essentials basically. First thing when it comes to what to buy, I would say you should buy a food scale or a kitchen scale. They are super cheap and I've had this one for pretty much the whole time I've been losing weight. So close to seven years now, it still works. I just change the battery out every now and then. It's amazing, it's a lifesaver. It's the only way that I feel comfortable in knowing what my portion sizes are because you'll find that if you measure stuff using measuring cups or just any other sort of measurement, it's not going to be as accurate as the weight. Another tip is when you're going to measure something like let's use peanut butter for example, instead of taking the peanut butter out and putting it on here to weigh it, just put the whole jar on here and turn it on or if you put the whole jar on here and then press the zero or tear button, it'll zero it out and then anything you take out of it will actually show up as a negative number. So that's just another quick tip about using the food scale that is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of stress. Next thing up on the list of things to get is meal prep containers. Now you don't need to get meal prep specific containers, but I really enjoy using them. I specifically like them for the ones that kind of have these separate compartments. That way I don't have to mix like like my proteins and my carbs. I just find it's a little bit easier with this. I don't really like the ones that are more than just two compartments because then the compartment is like, two of the compartments are really small. So it's like almost like a compartment for like a dipping sauce or something. I don't really think it's like a sufficient size, at least for what I'm making. I got these round ones. So when I make something like burrito bowls, I'm not really worried about having anything separate. So I just put it all in here and then mix it up. Like I put burrito bowls in here, chili in here, curry in here. But yeah, I mainly use these ones for when I have stuff that I like to eat separately. Um, they're really, really convenient because they're reusable, BPA free, they're microwave safe, they stack really well on top of each other, which is kind of important for me because it makes storage a lot easier. But if you don't have these and you can't afford these or you don't want to buy them or anything, plain old Tupperware will work just fine. It's just these tend to be sold in bulk and they're cheaper. You know, you can get like 15 of them for like 20 bucks or something like that. I'll have links in the description down below of absolutely everything I show you on this. They will be Amazon affiliate links, so it will be helping me out just a little bit if you do buy them, but it also will just show you the stuff that I actually use. All right, so next is something that's actually going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to cooking the food, and that is a rice cooker. I absolutely love this thing. It makes my life so much easier. It's so, so, so easy to use. I just throw the rice in, put some water in. It has a little bowl that goes on the inside. That's where you put your rice and water. You put it in, shut it. Then it has different buttons for what kind of rice you're making. But when it comes to just making meal preps really quick, what I really like about this is that you can make a ton of rice in it and it's pretty quick and it's pretty easy so if i'm in a pinch and i just want to be quick and make some quick meal preps i always use rice as my carb source and it really helps having a rice cooker because i don't have to watch it i don't really have to monitor it at all i can't really mess it up it just makes things a lot lot easier because if any of you are like me and you've tried to make rice on the stovetop i 100 percent would always mess something up. I would either put too much water and it would come out super mushy. I would cook it too long and it would get all crunchy on the bottom and the sides. I just never really quite could make it right. I wouldn't like cover it at the right time or uncover it. I don't know. There was just a lot of stuff that you could mess up when you're doing it on the stovetop and there's basically the only thing you can mess up while doing it in the rice cooker is too much water or too little water. The next thing is another thing that it was going to make it a lot easier to uh, cook and that is getting a barbecue. 
So with my barbecue, it's pretty wide, it's pretty large, and I can fit a ton of stuff on it. Like I could grill, you know, a whole week's worth of chicken. I could grill two different kinds of meat at the same time. I can grill vegetables on there if I want. I can wrap potatoes in tin foil, put them up on the top rack and make like baked potatoes in there. It is so versatile and it's so nice because if you're trying to watch your calories, which most people who are losing weight are trying to watch their calories, you don't have to use any oil or as much oil when you're cooking it as opposed to, let's say, you know, stovetop or even sometimes in the oven. So I really like barbecue. I like the way it makes food taste, especially I like having that little smoky char to my food. So yeah, uh, having a barbecue has been indispensable for me because not only is it easy to make a ton of food, it's easy to make a ton of food that tastes really good. All right, next up is another <laughs> cooking item. Uh, just so you guys know, you don't have to buy all of these things or any of these things. These are just things that, these are just things that have really helped me out in making cooking easy and kind of sticking to cooking frequently. So next is a crock pot. This is an old hand-me-down crock pot I handed down from my grandma to my mom to my mom to me. So as you can tell, it's really old, but it still works. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Really super easy. There's tons of crock pot recipes out there that are really healthy, that are really good. And the best thing about this is, is like if you work a really busy schedule, you can come home from work, put everything in the crock pot at night, let it cook overnight to the next day, when you get home from work and then it's already done then you just have to take it out and portion it i make stews in this i do like pulled chicken in this i do all sorts of stuff with crock pots and it's a huge huge help all right next thing is going to be a little bit about food and it is by frozen vegetables frozen vegetables are just as good as fresh vegetables in terms of the nutrition content and they are super easy to make i love buying these bags that are just steamable so i literally just throw this bag in the microwave and take it out and it's perfect it doesn't cost too much it, it costs roughly about the same as just buying fresh produce and it's really so much easier to make it also never goes bad which is a huge problem that i had with produce is i would buy a ton of produce eat you know a half to two thirds of it and then it, some of it would end up going bad and i'd have to throw it out these I never have to throw out if I don't get around to eating all of the ones that I buy within the first week. It doesn't matter because they're just frozen and they're still good to go. Also when I meal prep, I don't really put veggies in my meal preps anymore. I used to, but I found that I couldn't really fit enough veggies that I wanted to eat because I like eating really big meals into that with everything else. So that's when I just converted to these and I will just eat like a whole bag of this with my meal prep. So I'll microwave this first let it sit while the uh, while my meal prep's microwaving, pull them both out, open them both up, and then eat it that way. Now I kinda wanna talk about why I feel like meal prepping is important for weight loss. For me, the biggest, biggest thing is giving up those convenient meals. That I feel like is something that, that I struggled with the most, that my clients struggle with the most, is giving up those meals that you would normally just go grab and eat really quick when you're low on time, you're low on energy, or you're just not really quite feeling like cooking, that's when you go get fast food. That's when you order out. That's when you go to the restaurants. That's when you eat the food that you probably should be avoiding if you're really trying to make weight loss a serious part of your life. The best thing to combat that is, is to just have convenient meals ready to go. Ones that you just pull out of your fridge or freezer, pop in the microwave and you're done. If you meal prep and have those convenient meal preps in your fridge, not only is it, does it make eating healthy convenient, but it also makes it quicker than just going out and getting food because you don't even have to leave your house. And it also makes it cheaper. I do the math all the time on my meal preps just because I'm curious about how much money I'm saving. And each one of my meal preps really only costs me about two to three dollars when all things are considered. So it really saves you a lot of money in the long run. One other tip I have for people that are just kind of starting out with meal prep and are kind of, you know, intimidated by it is the fact that you don't have to meal prep like everybody else meals preps. I don't meal prep absolutely everything I'm going to eat in the day. If that's you and that's what you want to do, go for it. That's great. You know, being prepared is always going to be better than not being prepared. But I personally just don't like to do that. I don't like to plan out my whole week's worth of meals, 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all my snacks, and get it all prepared. It takes way too long. I'm not trying to do that. But if you just make more food every time you make food, that's a great introduction into meal prepping because then you're already getting all the dishes out. You're already getting all the ingredients out. You're already prepping everything for one meal. It doesn't take that much longer to do it for two meals or three meals or 10 meals. And then that way you have those convenience meals ready to go. Even if it's just two or three extra, those are two or three extra meals that you don't have to worry about anymore. It's a great way to go about things. Now one tip I do have for when I do meal prep is most of the time I make anywhere between 10 plus meals, but that is to put some in your fridge and some in your freezer. That way you don't really have to worry about eating those before they go bad. And as soon as you're done with all the ones in the fridge, I just move my ones from the freezer into my fridge. That way everything stays fresh, everything stays tasting good. It's awesome. The one kind of tip I do have for that is whenever I make pasta and I put it in the freezer, when I take it out of the freezer, it's kind of mushy. So that's one thing I kind of avoid. But if I'm just making like chicken and potatoes or something, those freeze and thaw perfectly fine like I honestly can't really tell the difference between some that have been in the freezer for a little while and the ones that I only stuck in the fridge all right so now to kind of wrap things up I want to teach you how I personally plan the meals that I'm going to meal prep and I think this is important for anybody losing weight regardless of whether you're meal prepping or not I really feel like you should prioritize your protein so I always, always, always base my meals around a protein source. Now it doesn't matter if you're you know, an omnivore and eat meat or if you're vegan and you don't eat meat, there's protein sources for no matter what style of eating you're doing. So first when you're picking your protein source, it could be chicken, you know, lean beef, lean ground beef, I like ground turkey a lot, the leaner cuts of pork, fish, it can be tofu, tempeh, say tan, it could even just be like edamame, but just pick that protein source first and then that way you know right off the bat you're going to be getting enough protein in that meal. Then I like to pick a carb source. So it can either be rice, potatoes. I normally like to pick things that are going to be kind of pretty fast and easy to cook. Just things that I can just throw in my oven real quick, throw in my rice cooker real quick, throw in my air fryer real quick. Just things that are gonna be quick. Then next I pick what veggies I want to eat. Most of the time I pick broccoli. I love eating it. I can eat it all all the time. I never get bored of it. So that's what I stick to. If I want to kind of switch things up, I do like asparagus too or green beans, but it really is up to you. Sometimes I'll even make a salad for the side and then that actually helps for this next tip is then you got to pick a source of fat. Now fat is something you want to be careful with because fat is the most dense uh, calorically but you still want to have fats in your diet. So whether it's like avocado, um, most of the time where my fat source comes from is really just a little bit of the oil that I use to cook everything. That's where I get my source of fat from. So if you're using oil to cook, that's where your source of fat is coming from. You don't really need to worry about it. Just don't go overboard with the oil because then, you know, like I was saying, fat is really calorically dense. So your calories can kind of get out of hand. And that's really how I plan out my meals. That's how I plan out my meal preps. One other little tip that I want to give you actually has to do with how I log my meal preps. So I log them in my fitness pal. I go under let me pull it up real quick. So I go to the sidebar menu, I go to recipes, meals, and foods, and I create a new recipe. Now when you create a new recipe, I just enter in all the ingredients manually. That's where the food scale comes in. I make sure I measure everything and I jot it down as I'm cooking. That way I know the total weights of everything that is going to be in all of my meal preps. Then you just plug in all the ingredients that you use and then it'll ask you how many servings the recipe makes. So if you make 10 meal preps, it's 10 servings. And then it's super easy to just log a meal prep as well and that will also save you time. So those are my best meal prep tips. Those are what I would suggest everybody does when they're just trying to get into meal prep and they kind of seem intimidated by maybe meal prepping everything they're eating that week or everything they're even going to eat in a day it really doesn't have to be that hard it really can be simple and it really can be just about making meals more convenient for yourself about saving time about saving money it's just a great idea 
all around, in my opinion, for weight loss. So if you have any other questions about meal prep, about how I do things, about how you should be doing things, throw them down in the comments below. I'm always going through my comments and answering more questions about anything I may have missed. But other than that, that's about it for this video. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you like me, please subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.